welcome to EMN5 today. Today we're going to talk about carpal bones. I think it's a good thing to review, specifically because of a case I had recently. So let's go right to that case. Uh, we had a 27-year-old male over in our trauma center. He was coming in after being beat up by his uh, ex-girlfriend's cousin, true story, uh, with a bat. He had a couple bruises, bumps all over. He had a clavicular fracture, a little scalp black, and was also complaining of some pain and swelling to the back of his uh, hand and wrist. So we went ahead and did our survey. We sent off the x-rays. Um, we went ahead and got an x-ray of the hand. And uh, when we came back to look at the results, it was kind of a busy night, so we were just looking at the prelim reads. And the Moonlighter had read a triquetral fracture of that wrist. So we're all sitting there looking at this x-ray, trying to find the fracture, which was not obvious. And to be honest, none of us could remember or find uh, which bone the triquetral bone was on this x-ray we were looking at. So that's why I wanted to just do this as a good review. So to start off with, here's a great picture of all of the carpal bones that are labeled. Now, all of us that were sitting looking at this x-ray had a mnemonic that we learned in medical school. Uh, the one I knew was uh, some lovers try positions that they can't handle. But none of us could remember where you started with the mnemonic. Um, everyone could pretty much identify the scaphoid and then that was about it. So I want to review that first by looking at radiograph and then um, also by some bony prominences on our own hands. So using this mnemonic, you're going to be starting scaphoid down here. So some lovers try positions. You're going to be going across in the proximal row and then coming back to the beginning and going across in the distal row. So that's what it looks like on the radiograph just for a point of reference. Now let's talk about the bony landmarks. I think the two easiest ones to palpate are your scaphoid and then the pisiform. So that's going to be in your first row of the some lovers try positions. The way to remember where to start with this, scaphoid being the first of the mnemonic, is that you can always remember the scaphoid because that's the one you break with a foosh and that's going to be your snuff box tenderness. So scaphoid, snuff box tenderness, it's right by the thumb. We all know where the snuff box is. So remember that's in your proximal row. That's where you're going to be starting your mnemonic off. And you're going to be aiming towards the opposite side, which is going to be your pisiform. And that's the other bony landmark that's easy to palpate right here. And you can kind of remember it. Pisiform is the pointy by the pinky. So that one's really easy to palpate. It's a pretty good bony landmark. You can feel it there. And then here's again just looking. So here's your scaphoid on uh, the skeleton, and there's your pisiform sticking out. There's your trichretrium right behind it. That's what we're trying to find. I can't really feel the hook of the hammy that well on my hands, but maybe it's more prominent than others. That's also a good bony landmark. So here it is all together. If you're looking at your hand and trying to remember where each one should be that you're palpating to see if the patient's tender at a certain area, you have the scaphoid, um, lunate, you're going across some lovers try of positions, pisiform, um, that they can't handle. Now we have another problem. There's these two T's up here. It's the trapezoid and the trapezium. So which is which? Uh, that always gets a little tricky. So this is the trapezium and this is the trapezoid. There's two ways I've heard to remember that. The trapezium is by the thumb, so trapezium thumb. Another way I've heard is that you need your thumb to use a trapeze. I like the trapezium by the thumb. And then you can remember the trapezoid is uh, this one next to it. So you're going to be going across, proximal row, come back, trapeziums by the thumb, go across, all the way to the hook of the hammock. So I want to talk a little bit about fractures and carpal bones. The most common fractures are going to be your proximal row. So that's scaphoid, lunate, triquetrium, and pisiform. Of that proximal row, the scaphoid and the triquetral bone, which is our guy's bone that he broke, um, are going to be your most common. Uh, scaphoid is by far the most common, 70%. That's going to be your foosh injuries and associated with snuff box tenderness. There's your snuff box. Scaphoid's right under there, and there's exactly where it's going to be hitting on the ground. The other one, triquetral bone, I really hadn't been aware of was the second most common. It says quoted as 14%, which uh, makes sense. It's our guy's fracture. It can also be caused by a foosh injury. However, the other mechanism, I thought this was interesting, was a direct blow to the dorsum of the hand, and that's exactly what our patient had. He was, again, beat up by a bat, so he was had put his arm up to defend himself and got hit on the back of the hand with the bat. The other thing is that it noted that you should be able to feel some point tenderness over the trichretral bone. And I know it wasn't one of the bony landmarks I pointed out before, and my sources recommended 
that you use a radial deviation during exam in order to get that bone to kind of pop out a little more towards the surface. And you can actually do this, it uh, works quite well. So you think of the piezoformis sitting right on top on the palmar side, you can feel that pretty well. If you put your thumb on the piezoform and then your other fingers on the dorsum side of the hand, that's where you're going to be feeling for that tricretral bone. Now if you radially deviate your hand, so that's towards your thumb, and you can actually feel a bone kind of pop out right under your fingers, um, and that should be your tricretral bone. Um, and here I just wanted to show a couple uh, pictures so you can see uh, best on this view. There's fracture, there's fracture. So three to remember for this, you know, we all have our mnemonic, try to remember some of the bony landmarks I was showing, or just look it up on Google. Remember that your proximal row has the most fractures with your scaphoid at 70% and tricretral bone at 14%. And here's a little slide just showing a summary of all of that that I just said. Thanks very much for joining us on this EM in 5 today.